Alright guys, so last video of section one. Um, this is a little program I wrote to demonstrate all four of the concepts we learned, which was uh, declaring variables, assigning values, operators, and expressions. Uh, and also a little bit of user input output through the console window and various other little things. <coughs> so this is my Chipotle calorie calculator. So I've broken this down into some sections that are really easy to follow. So they're, they're pretty well documented here with some comments. This top section, I just declared a bunch of variables. And you can see um, two things you'll notice about them was that is that they're compound declaration and assignments. So I declare the variable like int calories tortilla and I also assign it the value. So this is a compound statement of a variable declaration and a value assignment, like we talked about before. So the, the purpose of this variable is to let me know that there's 300 calories in a flour tortilla. Now sometimes a variable, uh, unlike the name would imply, has a value that's never going to change. Uh, a flour tortilla is always 300 calories. I'm never going to change the value of that particular variable. In those cases, you can add this word over here, const. Um, the const keyword in the language applies that rule to your variable that you can, once you've declared it, you can never change the value again. It's not really necessary because, uh, you know, you, you don't have to change the value or you can just not change the value, but just in case you want to make sure that it's clear that this is a value that never changes, you can add const. So all these variable declarations have and value assignments um, have the same purpose. I'm creating a, basically a database of information here that stores how many calories there are in each item on the Chipotle menu. <coughs> The reason I'm doing that is because that's information that I'm going to need in order to come up with the output of my program. Um, so a program usually is a combination of known data and data that you don't know that you might obtain from another source, and then it processes that data to come up with an output. In this case, that is exactly what's going to happen. We have known information, which is the calories of every item on the menu. We have unknown information, which is, well, which of these items do you want on your burrito? And then the output is going to be how many calories after we process all that information, the known amount of calories and the unknown quantity of each particular item, we're going to output the total calories of your burrito. So this first section is my known information. That's why it's constant, and I'm just setting the values hard-coded without asking the user anything. <coughs> the second set of code I have here in the comments, it says, this section is for some variables in which I do not yet know the value. I need to collect these values from the user through the console window. So I'm going to ask the user what's their name, and then I'm going to ask them how many tortillas they want, how many carnitas they want, how many uh, orders of taco shells they want, how many orders of rice they want, and all of this information in combination with the amount of calories per item will be will give me all of the data that I need in order to come up with my output. So these are just simple variable declarations in which I am not giving them a value, I'm just declaring them. Down here in my third section, I say now I will start collecting the data I need to compute my meal calories. And this is just a simple sequence of questions. I say, hey, what's your name? And then I let them type something in and I store that in their name. I say, what's your last name? I let them type something in, I store that in my last name. I say, how many orders of chicken do you want? And I let them type in a number and I store that number in the add chicken variable. I ask them how many orders of carnitas they want, I let them type in a number, and I store that number in add carnitas, and so on and so forth. So I keep doing asking these questions, how many of each item do you want on the menu? And this is similar to if you're going through the line at Chipotle, they say, 
do you want beans, do you want double meat, how many of these do you want? So this is very similar to the process of adding items to your order. So now I'm actually assigning values to all these variables that I previously d declared up there. <coughs> And then finally, at the bottom, I have the end of the program, or almost the end of the program, where I say, now I have all the data I need to compute my total meal calorie count. So before, I was just declaring variables and assigning values. But now, um, I'm declaring a variable which is basically the, the end-all, be-all of this program. I want the total meal calories. And I, after I declare it and I give it the initial value of zero, you'll notice I have a sequence of instructions here that are doing a couple things. First of all, I'm using the assignment increment operator. <coughs> so that means every single time I'm changing total meal calories, I'm not removing the value, I'm incrementing the value. So if I said plus equal to 1, plus equal to 1, plus equal to 1, I, I wouldn't be blowing away the value, I would be adding the value. So I'm I'm basically summing up all of these values. And so that's one of our operators. So that's an example of an operator that we're using. And if you look at the values that we're actually using, so the values on each on the right side of the assignment, the increment assignment operator, you'll notice they're all arithmetic expressions using the multiplication operator. So and th this is pretty simple. We say, well, however many calories there are in chicken, uh, you know, if, if you just said you wanted three chickens, then we multiply that times three. So, scrolling back up, let me see for a second. So, in chicken, there's 180 calories. Uh oh, I have to do math. So, I'll just do two because I'm bad at math. So, if the person said they wanted two chicken and the calories per chicken is 180, then you would have 360 calories. It would add the 360 onto the already existing value of zero and then it's, it keeps just doing this over and over and over, multiplying the quantity times the calories and incrementing the total meal calories. And by the time you get to the end, um, you should have total meal calories be the total meal calories. So then very finally, at the end is an example of some output. So I want to show the user what the results of the program were and what their meal calories are in a kind of nicely formatted way. So I see so I say order details for, you know, Dami Santos. And then I say your total total calorie count equals your total meal calories. And then I say press any key to continue and the program ends. So notice I'm using system.console.writeline and if you look what's in between the parentheses, that is a concatenation of a literal string, a string, a variable string, another literal string, a variable string, and another literal string. So this is just one giant concatenation of strings, which means it's one string. So we should write that to the, the screen just fine. Same here, concatenate your total calorie count equals with the variable value of total meal calories and the plus or and the uh, period and that should be it. So now let's debug through this whole thing and watch it work. So I'm gonna put I think the first breakpoint you can't really put breakpoints and variable declarations because they don't really do much so right there. And I'll only debug through this for a minute and then I'll let, I'll just kind of let it go. I'm going to close the solution explorer so I can see the output window while I'm running it. Alright, let's see how this goes. Alright, program running. Console window should be popping up here. So here it is. I'm going to put that over there so I can see it, make this a little smaller. Okay, so this first line of code, when I skip over it with F10, or when I execute it with F10, it should show what is your first name on the screen. It does. This is going to be a read line, so as soon as I execute this, it's going to wait. 
and now it's waiting for me to type in something. My first name is Donnie. And now I'm going to execute this line by hitting F10, and it's going to say, what is your last name? And now I'm going to execute the console read line, and that's waiting. So now I'm going to type in my last name. And this will be the last one I do, then I'll just let it fly. So this one is going to print out how many orders of chicken are in your meal. Oops. You have to make sure that when you hit F10, you have the focus in the IDE. And it did. This one, when I hit F10, it's going to execute the console read line, which is going to wait. And now it's expecting a number. If I don't put in a number, it'll blow up because int dot parse. If you if it tries to if it tries to change a non number into a number, it'll blow up. So I will just say how many. Let's see how many chicken do I usually get in my meal? One, I think. So at, at this point, we can see. Let's look at our locals here. So add chicken is one. First name equals Donnie. Last name equals Santos. So you can see these kind of all here are all the variables that describe my name and the and the quantities. And these constant variables down here have all of the calorie counts. So if I just let this fly and I take the breakpoint off, actually to instead of stepping over and over and over with F10, you can just hit F5, and F5 means just, just keep going. So I'm going to hit F5, the program's just going to keep running. So how many carnitas do I want? I want one. Steak, zero. Barbacoa, zero. Beans, one. One cheese, one fajita, no tortilla, no shells, no rice, too many carbs, no sour cream, no guacamole, I'm allergic to avocados. Corn salsa, not today. Other salsa, no. And before I do that, so where are we? We are at the line of code that, <coughs> excuse me, asked for the how much other salsa do we want. So we're way down here. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here because this might be interesting. So I'm going to say, let's see, how many other salsa, no other salsa. All right, so my burrito is done at that point. And now it gets into the computation point. So let's pay attention to what's going on with, where is it, total meal calories. So it declared total meal calories as zero. And each time I execute a line of code, it's going to increment that variable with the value on the right. In each case, it's an it's a uh, arithmetic expression using the multiplication operator. So, and I can before I execute this line of code, I can hover over each one. So, calories chicken is 180. Add chicken is one. So, I would expect my total meal calories to be 180 after this line of code. And there it is, 180. Uh, carnitas is 220 calories times one. So, that should be up to 400 after I go over that one. So now, all of a sudden, I'm at 400 calories. I didn't have any steak, so that shouldn't change. No barbacoa didn't change. No tortilla. No taco shells. Um, I didn't have rice. I did have one beans, and beans times 120 should up it to 520. So now it's 520. I did have fajitas, and fajitas are 20. So that's up to 540. No guac. No sour cream. Cheese is 100. Um, no corn and no other. So believe it or not, this is the biggest burrito that I ever, I usually get single meat, so it's usually about 500 calories or less, but this is a double meat burrito at the bargain calorie price of 640 measly little calories, all protein. Alright, so it's going to now output um, my name. So order details for Donnie Santos. And now it's going to print out your total calorie count concatenated with the total meal calories, which is 640, concatenated with the period. So that looks all nice. Your total calorie count equals 640. And it's now waiting for me to hit a key. And as soon as I do, the program should end. Oh, wait, it's still, see, the, the breakpoint is still on this line of code, so it hasn't actually executed read key yet. So when I hit F10, now it executed read key. Now it's waiting for the key. Now anytime I hit anything, the program should end.
I think I got confused because I was debugging. Anyway, I'll just hit stop. <clears throat> All right, so long story short, I have a Chipotle cal calorie calculator, and just for giggles, let's do let's run it one more time and see how many calories there are in a burrito that like most people get. I'll order the burrito that my friend John gets. John, this. Oh, he'd kill me if he knew that I was putting him on a YouTube video. Okay, he usually gets, um, what does he get? I think he just gets steak. So, no chicken, no carnitas, steak, no barbacoa. He gets beans, he gets cheese, doesn't get fajita, he does get a tortilla, no taco shells, yes rice, yes sour cream, yes guacamole, um, what kind of salsa does he get? I think he just gets tomato salsa. So one. Booyah, that's a 1220 calorie burrito. Sorry to tell you, John. Alright, and I pressed any, cal any key and my program ended. So that's the program. You can see I, I incorporated a lot of the stuff that we learned. Uh, I don't know, maybe you want me to write another thing like this, uh, if it would help. I'll talk to you guys in class about it next time. But until then, there's my Chipotle calorie calculator. So it is now, what is it? It's Thursday night. I'm going to get these on YouTube, set out the announcement that they're all ready, and um, I will let you guys spend whatever time you have over the weekend to uh, take a look at this stuff. And on Tuesday, we will make sure that we are heads down programming so that we can get through this first section. All right, thanks.